240p slash 480i. Before OLED, before 4K, before people argued online about frame rates, there were boxes. Big, buzzing, radiation-leaking boxes, called CRTs, cathode ray tubes. They were the kings of the living room for nearly 70 years, and every one of them worked like mad science. Inside that heavy shell was a vacuum tube the size of a baseball bat. At the back, an electron gun fired streams of electrons towards the screen. The inside of the glass was coated with red, green, and blue phosphors that glowed when hit. That flicker you saw? That is your show being drawn from top to bottom, one line at a time, 30 times every second. That hum you heard? The high-pitched scream of 15,750 hertz. The sound of science pretending to be entertainment. Most adults couldn't hear it anymore, but every kid could. It was like the TV whispering, You shouldn't be this close. A standard CRT displayed 480i, which means half the lines refreshed per frame, interlaced video. It saved bandwidth, but if you paused the scene, everyone looked like a broken hologram. Still, that slight blur made everything look softer and more… real. Early news anchors looked flawless, old Star Trek sets looked expensive, even rubber monsters looked convincing because CRTs didn't have enough clarity to expose the seams. Here's where it gets fun. These things were tanks. A 27-inch Sony Trinitron weighed nearly 100 pounds and could easily double as a coffee table. Zenith, RCA, and Panasonic built models that could outlive you. They ran hot enough to warm a small apartment, and static was so strong that dust would stick to the screen like a magnet. And yet, people loved them. They came with wood paneling, knobs that clicked like safes, and de-gauss buttons that made the whole picture wobble like jelly. Every home had one centerpiece TV, a literal shrine where families gathered. But here's the tiny detail that changed everything. That blur wasn't a flaw, it was a deliberate softening effect. It gave makeup a cleaner finish, made rough sets look richer, and kept crews from fixing every tiny imperfection. They weighed as much as fat obese toddlers, used more power than your fridge, and somehow survived decades of abuse. You could drop one down the stairs, plug it back in, and it would still show Wheel of Fortune. Owning a CRT didn't make you tech-savvy, it made you strong. If you managed to move one without throwing out your back, you'd officially leveled up to adulthood. 480p. The early 2000s were awkward, kind of like puberty for TVs. Manufacturers started bragging about digital clarity, but we were still watching Shrek on DVD. 480p, or Enhanced Definition, finally ditched interlacing. That P stands for Progressive Scan, meaning the whole image updated at once instead of in alternating lines. In simple terms, less flicker, smoother motion, no more headache halfway through Finding Nemo. ED TVs were the first sets to support component cables, those red, green, and blue connectors that looked like Twizzlers with a purpose. They carried higher quality analog signals, and if you plugged them in wrong, everything turned green like you were watching TV through a P. And this is where things get interesting. ED TVs were secretly just better CRTs or early plasma screens pretending to be HD. They marketed flat screens, but they still had big backsides. Every living room had a TV that looked sleek from the front and pregnant from the side. 480p didn't last long, but it taught TV companies how to overpromise and underdeliver, a skill they still haven't lost. 720p. Then came 720p, and suddenly we could count pores on news anchors. 1280 by 720 pixels. The first time HD actually meant something. These TVs looked impossibly sleek for the mid-2000s. Gone were the glass bubbles of CRTs. This was a flat panel era. The two main players? Plasma and LCD. Plasma screens worked like microscopic neon signs. Each pixel was a tiny gas cell that lit up red, green, or blue when charged. It gave you deep blacks, smooth motion, and colors that popped. But it also weighed as much as regret and doubled as a space heater. Watch a long movie and you could practically fry an egg on it. LCDs, liquid crystal displays, took a different approach. They used a bright fluorescent backlight shining through millions of liquid crystal shutters. When the crystals twisted, they blocked or let light through to create an image. That's why early LCDs always looked a little… off. Black was never truly black, more like a very committed grey. 
Still, both were a revelation. They were thinner, lighter, and finally looked like something from the Jetsons. Wall mounting became a trend, until people realized you needed four friends and a stud finder to actually pull it off. But here's what almost everyone forgets. 720p wasn't real HD by modern standards. It was the training wheels version. Yet back then, it felt like witchcraft. You went from fuzzy VHS tapes to ESPN in crisp detail, where you could actually see individual blades of grass and the sweat on athletes who didn't ask for that kind of attention. Every electronics store ran the same demo loops, waterfalls, flowers, fireworks, the kind of things nobody watched at home but everyone stared at in Best Buy like it was a religious experience. Even cable companies got in on it, slapping Now in HD on every channel, even if the source footage was barely upgraded. HD Ready became the industry's favorite scam. It meant your TV could receive a 720p signal, but downscale it to something worse. Basically, your brand new TV was cosplaying as HD. Still, people didn't care. 720p looked incredible. It was bright, colorful, and finally widescreen 69, which made everything feel cinematic. After decades of square screens, we'd officially buried for three for good. RIP black bars, we won't miss you. 1080p. 1080p, the golden child. 1920 by 1080 pixels of confidence. When this hit, people lined up to watch planet Earth like it was the second coming. Blu-ray players, HDMI cables, flat panels, this was the true digital age. Plasma gave us deep blacks, LCD got LED backlights, making screens thinner and colors punchier. Finally, we could hang a TV on a wall instead of building furniture around it. But here's what people still got wrong about it. 1080p wasn't just about sharper images. It was the first time motion, color, and sound all leveled up together. Dolby Digital Sound, 120Hz refresh rates, HDMI carrying everything through one magical cable instead of five confusing ones. Of course, that's also when tech stores started scamming you with premium gold HDMI cables that allegedly gave you cleaner pixels. They didn't, but they did give Best Buy employees commissions. 1080p ruled for nearly a decade, and honestly, it still looks fine. Most streaming services are still HD today because the internet can't handle your 4K ego. 1440p 1440p, or 2K, is the resolution everyone skips over like a middle sibling in a family photo. 2560 by 1440 pixels, sharper than 1080p, lighter than 4K. Perfect balance, perfect clarity, almost perfect invisibility. It started showing up on PC monitors, not TVs, because TV manufacturers realized it was hard to market something called 2 point whatever K. Gamers loved it because it hit that sweet spot, looked crisp without melting your graphics card. But here's the part nobody ever talks about. 1440p quietly shaped the future. It refined panel tech, refresh rates, and color accuracy. It was the quiet foundation that enabled 4K long before anyone noticed. To this day, most people don't even know it exists, and if you try to explain it, someone will say, so it's like half of 4K, and then walk away. 2160p. Then came 4K, and every TV commercial became a close-up of a tomato for no reason. 3840 by 2160 pixels. That's over 8 million little dots working overtime so you can see every blade of grass in a car commercial. Every studio started flexing HDR, local dimming, and quantum dots like we all had engineering degrees. LED, OLED, and QLED fought for dominance. LED TVs used backlights that dimmed in sections. QLED added quantum dots, tiny crystals that glow with ultra-pure colors. OLED said, forget backlights, and made each pixel glow on its own. But here's the tiny detail that changed everything. 4K wasn't just sharper, it was smarter. TVs became computers, they connected to Wi-Fi, learned your habits, and suggested shows you didn't ask for. We went from turning on the TV to booting up the entertainment OS. It was also the first time resolution outpaced human eyesight. Unless you sit three inches from your screen, you can't even see all those pixels, but you'll still pay for them. 4320p. 
8K is what happens when manufacturers run out of ideas but still need to sell something. 7680 by 4320 pixels, 33 million dots, each one silently asking, can you even tell the difference? There's barely any 8K content, most of what you see is upscaled 4K, meaning the TV invents fake pixels. And here's the twist, 8K isn't for you, it's for bragging rights, it's a flex. TV brands needed a new number to flash on the box. They've turned resolution into fashion. Every few years, a higher number drops, and suddenly your living room looks outdated. Still, the technology is wild. Advanced AI processors, 10-bit color depth, and brightness so high you can get a tan. Watching an 8K demo reel feels like peeking into another dimension, until you check the price tag and remember you still owe money on your 4K. Beyond 8K. So where do we go after 33 million pixels? Apparently, sideways. Micro-LED, QD OLED, rollable displays, TVs have stopped evolving vertically and started mutating. Micro-LED uses millions of microscopic LEDs that light themselves. No backlight, no burn-in, no nonsense. QD OLED combines OLED's perfect blacks with quantum dots' insane brightness. Like Frankenstein, but sexy. And this is the part that separates it from everything before it. The screen is no longer the product, it's the platform. AI chips inside these TVs upscale, color correct, and optimize every frame like they're competing for Oscars. Some can even detect what you're watching and adjust mood lighting around your room. There are transparent TVs, ones that roll into the ceiling, and prototypes that fold like paper. But despite all that, most people still watch TikToks at 480p. A century later, we've gone from electron beams to self-emissive nanocrystals, and still ended up with the same bright rectangle we stare at during dinner.